thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to join in in your discussion and your debate on the future of the economic, monetary, banking and political union, a, a subject which is fundamental to the future of the European project itself. Uh, many issues um, of the future union are being discussed at the level of the full EU membership. However, in recent times, <coughs> excuse me, in recent times, the Eurogroup has played a significant role in this discussion as well. The Eurogroup's recent focus has been twofold, taking decisive action to manage the crisis and at the same time working towards and ensuring the crisis root causes are permanently addressed to boost jobs and growth. And we have looked for permanent solutions to these causes. And it's become obvious that strengthening the fabric of our monetary union and reinforcing our economic governance structures just cannot wait. Game-changing measures have been taken. The European Stability Mechanism, the ESM, now provides a permanent safety net with the means to support member states in difficulty and preserve the financial stability in the EU. Considerable fiscal consolidation is underway, accompanied by far-reaching structural reforms to boost competitiveness in all member states. Stronger economic governance is a reality. New legislation has reinforced fiscal and macroeconomic surveillance and coordination. Ladies and gentlemen, there is still a long way to go. The European Union must not waver in its commitment to achieving sound public finances. The future of the economic and monetary union, but also the future of our European social model, depends on us recognizing clearly that we cannot spend and borrow our way to recovery in a sustainable way. Future investments in education, healthcare, active labor market policy are all predicated on sound public finances. Fiscal consolidation may weigh down on growth in the short term, but it's an absolute condition for EU's prosperity in the middle and long term. But the prosperous future for the European Monetary Union also depends on us rebuilding and restoring confidence in the banking sector. This is vital if we are to restore normal lending to hardworking businesses and families. It's the fuel of our economy. We must therefore press ahead with the completion of a banking union, a banking union that strengthens bank supervision and delivers genuinely integrated resolution tools. First, the rapid implementation of agreed rules on capital bank, uh, bank capital requirements and a single supervisory mechanism is essential. Capital requirement rules will make the financial sector better equipped to manage risks and to absorb shocks. The single supervisory mechanism will place all systemically important Eurozone banks under the direct supervision of the European Central Bank. And it will also ensure that when banks are in trouble, alarm bells are sounded early and immediate action is taken and the worst can be avoided. Second, we must now turn our attention to how we resolve failing banks in the event that this is, re this is required. To do this fairly and efficiently, we must ensure that those who have profited from a bank's risk-taking also bear the cost. A clear hierarchy of claims will need to be agreed in this context. Moreover, deposits up to 100,000 euros should be safeguarded while the use of public money is avoided as much as possible. Swift completion of the discussions on the Bank Recovery and Resolution director, Directive is therefore essential. By ensuring that the private sector bears the primary responsibility for bank resolution, market discipline will be increased and a sustainable, healthy financial sector can be achieved. Furthermore, establishing a single resolution mechanism to ensure the timely and orderly resolution of failed institutions is a priority. This will reduce resolution costs and speed up the process, and it's a necessary complement to the single supervisory mechanism. Working on the banking union is part of my ambition to, uh, to move the Eurogroup's focus from crisis management to a more structured debate on how to enhance future growth and competitiveness 
in the whole euro area. Jobs lost during the crisis must be replaced and new jobs must be created for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, the Eurogroup's agenda is clear. Gradually working towards balancing budgets, strengthening our financial system, and keeping up the structural reforms necessary for competitiveness and for economic growth in all member states. Where new structures and decision-making processes are required, their democratic legitimacy and accountability must be guaranteed. New mechanisms to increase the level of cooperation between national parliaments and the European Parliament are, in my view, particularly important in this regard. European policies and their underlying choices are too often implicit and have to be made explicit. We have to realize that in order to involve the citizens of our countries, we have to talk about the choices we make, we have to explain the dilemmas, the trade-offs, and always, always talk about the fairness of our choices and the perspectives that will come from them. The European Union has embarked on large projects before, uh, not getting it quite right, and then having to um, do a lot of repair work afterwards. Now, I'd like to... I can't promise you that we will get it right completely, uh, right from the start, but let's try. I think it's very important to get the order right, and the order right will be We've now taken a decision and, and an agreement also with the Parliament on the single supervisory mechanism. The next step would be, and hopefully in June, that we could agree on the um, recovery and resolution directive, which is being discussed right now, as well as the instrument of direct recap from the ESM. I think we need both, and we need them in the way that they work together. Um, both. Uh, instruments are very important right from the start when we start next year with uh, the ECB's work uh, on supervision. Then, of course, hopefully this summer, the European Commission will put forward proposals uh, on the single resolution mechanism, uh, the single resolution fund, fund, and possibly even a single resolution authority. Uh, and then the uh, next phase after that, uh, which um, involves shaping up the banks first, putting the resolution mechanism in place, having an effective uh, supervisory uh, uh, mechanism and authority. Uh, the next phase is the um, single deposit guarantee uh, system. So don't, uh, don't, no mistake there, we definitely also need that building block, uh, but I'd like to emphasize the right order uh, and to do it in the right way. The first thing that the ECB will have to do when they take on their supervisory task is uh, to have an asset quality review of the main banks that will be under their supervision. Uh, and I think very soon after that, uh, all, all the other banks uh, in Europe as well, uh, because uh, there is still the risk of contamination between banks. Um, the outcome of that asset quality review, uh, we don't know yet, but it might be worrying. It might be worrying for some banks in some countries, we don't exactly know. What I do know is that when we do have an outcome that is worrying, we need to have the instruments to deal with the problems. Because just exposing problems in banks and not having an answer how to recapitalize banks, how to strengthen them, etc., that will be very dangerous. So that's why I've made the point that we need the instruments ready uh, before the ECB starts with their work. We need the instruments uh, in terms of direct recap, resolution, etc., ready to deal with the problems that will then be put into the um, spotlight. Um, whether that will take uh, bonds as the US had after the First war, World War, let me think about that a little longer. Uh, but um, your main point is we need the instruments to recapitalize banks. We need to do it quickly because it's going to be a, uh, like a handbrake on our economic recovery. It is in many countries. Uh, the lack of credit uh, coming from the banks is now slowing down any recovery uh, of the economy in many countries. The harmonization of the national deposit guarantee systems, I think, is more or less finalized, will be formally finalized, hopefully, before the summer. Um, but as you say, that is a, a harmonization of the national systems. 
Um, I think the question uh, of the chairman uh, in my direction was, uh, is there going to be a single uh, deposit guarantee system uh, on a European level? Uh, and my answer to that was, that will be the final building block of the banking union, uh, a necessary building block, but in a, in a particular order. So hopefully that has clarified that point.